Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to find an interesting niche for your product on Amazon so that you can increase your search rankings and get your product in front of the eyes of your customers. As an example, we'll use a book that uh, I made with my friend. It's called the Conversation Book and we actually want to sell it on Amazon. So it's a real use case and I will show you how we go along to uh, find the perfect niche for this product. So the core of this approach is to visualize a map of what the customers are searching for, which you can see on this screen here. Then you visualize a map of what the customers actually find for your product. So this is the picture of the current supply. The first one was the picture of the informational demand. This is the picture of the informational supply. And then once you analyze those two knowledge graphs and you understand what are the search patterns and what people actually find, you can then overlay these graphs on top of each other and look at the differences. So what people search for that they don't yet find. And then you position your product in this very niche so that you can understand that, for instance, in our case, they're searching for books to play questions with friends. And this is not something that they really easily find when they go on Amazon. So when you put a product and you use those keywords to promote it on Amazon, then you have a higher chance of appearing in search results because you're catering to the relation between the terms which uh, other sellers are not catering to yet. So this is really like a big advantage because instead of just analyzing the keywords, you're actually looking at the relations and patterns of keywords that people search for, but they don't yet find. So this is how this approach works. And if you're interested, keep watching. I will show you how you can apply it to your own products. And by the way, you can also do it not only on Amazon, but any other platform as well. So in this demonstration, we will be using an app called Infranodus. And Infranodus is an app which visualizes any text as a network. So I will show you how we go along. First, we will import the related search queries for our product. Our product is a book on conversations. I made the video just before that showed uh, in more detail the workflow that I'm going to go through right now, but I'll just show you the basic steps. So I'm going to import some data on the conversation book. And what happens here is that Infranodus extracts uh, the top search queries that are related to this one. So it's like when you search on Google, it shows you what conversation book is related to what else people search for. So this is exactly this data. If you click on keyword research, you will get this information into Infranodus. And then it visualizes it as a graph to show you what are those terms and how they're related to one another. So for example, here it already removed the conversation book from the graph. But um, if you show it inside, of course, then these will be the two main keywords that people search for, but you hide them. And then you see the context around the search query. So you understand much better what people search for when they search for the conversation book. And for instance, here I see that when they search for the books and conversations, they also search for books on English practice. Okay, so this is interesting. I can um, explore these terms in more detail later. And if I select English practice, for instance, then I can see all the different terms uh, and search queries that people use when they search for English practice in relation to conversation book. I also have this in the keyword relations here. Okay, so then I add a few more related search queries to this graph like conversation uh, games, for example, because this is also a big uh, topic than question books. And as you see, I'm constructing the graph over and over again with more and more related search queries, maybe also question games. And then also I will add conversations and see what else is related to it. And then I will also add questions. Okay, so now I have a full graph of the customer demand in relation to my product. And I can see using the AI here, what are the main topics that pop up uh, so I see that they're looking for games and conversations, books to study English, questions to play with friends, and then this smaller cluster here, something about bridal shower. Uh, this is probably some unrelated stuff. So you see, I have a map of the customer demand for my product. I understand what it's about. Now we're going to the next step. The next step is to see what customers actually find when they uh, search for books on conversations and questions. Okay. 
So we go back to Infranodus and we type in conversation book again. But this time we'll be using the Amazon keywords import feature. And what this feature does is that it allows you to select a specific market. So for example, here I will analyze amazon.com, but you can also select any other country. Of course, you will have to use the language of that country. And then it imports search results for this particular search term. So I think it takes the first 100 or 200 results, top ones, and analyzes the titles and the descriptions of the product so that you can see what terms and what concepts people who sell products that are related to yours use when they describe them online, right? And this usually takes time because it actually scrapes Amazon. If you have any other tool that allows you to get this information quicker, then you can use that. For instance, if you use Helium 10, this is a one tool, or you can also use Jungle Scout. They both import data from Amazon and then you can kind of like get this data in and uh, export it also. So here you would just perform some kind of, uh, I guess, keyword research and then do the same thing. Try to find which products exist for uh, your search query. And then you export this as a CSV file, as a spreadsheet, and then you can uh, analyze this. But if you use Infernodus, after waiting for some time, you will get exactly the same data back. You will see which products are offered on Amazon in relation to the conversation books, right? And then you see a very nice graph. And just to explain to you how the graph works is uh, that the terms that are more relevant and more important are shown bigger on the graph. So you will see them bigger, like here, conversation book obviously is a big term because we're looking for the conversation books, right? And then the words and concepts that are used together in the same context, they will have the same color. So for example, here we have one cluster on improving skills uh, and improving talking skills. And this means that these words are used in the same context usually when people describe the product. So we understand that there's a cluster of products on improving your talking skills. And if you click here, you will see more improving communication skills and so on. Then this is something for book lovers. Then uh, this is about conversations, essential dialogues, and also learning the language and so on. And what I like to do before analyzing the graph is to actually remove the two words that I made the search for, because then I will get to more nuanced ideas. So I will select those two, oh, uh, conversation book, and then I hide them from the graph. And then it shows me what is the context around um, these search queries. And by the way, you see also here the list of the products that it imported. And I will later show you how you can also filter them. But there you then turn on the AI interpretation of those clusters and you see that we have a cluster of offerings on communication skills, on social connection, family fun, and online dating. And then you have more here, relationships, reading strategies, and so on, right? So you see a very clear picture of what the current customer supply is. So what is actually supplied to the customers in relation to this topic, okay? and. There already it's quite interesting information because uh, on the one side I know that uh, they look for, let's, let's open this previous graph and I'll show you how you can compare them. So on the first graph we had the picture of informational demand, so it's what people search for when they search for books uh, on conversations and related search, search terms, right? So here I see that they're searching for games, questions, books for English, okay? And what they actually find are books on communication skills, social connections, family fun, and online dating. So as you can see, actually, already it's, it's pretty visible that uh, there is a, too much supply of books on communication skills, but this is not actually what people are searching for. They're searching for games and for things to play with friends. So that could be my first insight for this product, the book that we're writing, that, you know, I wouldn't... Uh, market it as something that improves your communication skills because I see that there is a lot of products uh, on this topic. I would rather market it as a, a game and as something that you can use with friends and play around with. Okay, And then uh, also you can see that, for instance, there's quite a few stuff on, on online dating, but this was not so much present here. For instance, here it was more about questions with friends uh, and family. So this is another insight as well. And that already gives us a good information. But in fact, you can do this automatically. So you can look at the graph and generate those ideas. 
but you can also compare two graphs. And this is one of the most powerful features of Infranodus that I want to show you last. Here you have a graph of the supply and now you will click here and you will ask it to show you how it's different from the graph of the demand. So we're overlaying the graph of uh, supply on the graph of demand and we're asking it specifically, as you can see here, how Amazon Conversation Books, so uh, the descriptions and titles of the books and conversations, how are they different from the keywords that people use when they search for them, okay? And here it shows you the graph, it also confirms it here, what exists in the keywords that people use when they search for your product, but not on Amazon as a product, right? And of course, this is not just showing you which keywords people uh, use but uh, they don't find. It's rather showing the relations between them and this is very important because of course they will you know use the words like game and question when they search for things and they will definitely see some results when when they use those words to find books and conversation. But it's very important that when you click here you see that actually they use game and they use question uh, but they don't find books that mention both question games. They will find them, but they will not be at the top of search results for the conversation books. So these are the insights that you can extract here that not only like we said at the beginning that we want to make books that are focused on uh, the playful aspect of communication and something that you could do with friends, but also we could propose that it's a question game because uh, there's not so many conversation books apparently that combine those both terms together. Because if you click on the term, it shows you what it's connected to. And as you see, uh, it's not connected to the term question. Game here is more connected to English, um, conversation starter, online. You can actually click here and see everything it's connected to. So you see it's like English, student quiz. So it's for learning and also to use as a conversation starter, but not connected to questions. And then if you click on question, you see that it's connected again to language learning, but also relationships and so on. And uh, again, this is not something that's so much present in the informational supply. So when you overlay those two graphs, you can start analyzing the relations between the search terms that people use. So this is the graph of the search terms that they use together in the same context, uh, their demand patterns, so to say. But uh, those relations that you see here are not present in the actual search results, okay? So this is what you want to target. You want to find the niche uh, where you target the keywords that people use together, but for which they don't yet find so many results, at least not at the top. All right. So this is how you could analyze this graph. And like I said, in my particular case, I'm going to focus on books uh, that, uh, that combine games and questions and also promote my book as a book which which is a question game maybe and that is also good for learning english because again here we have question and english there is a relationship between those two terms because when i click it i can also see english highlighted so there's definitely and you can see here there are search terms that mention those two terms but there is a, um, not this relationship it doesn't exist in the search results for the conversation book so this is an insight for me to say okay I, will, I have a conversation book, but, but a conversation book that allows you to think of interesting questions to ask when you learn English. So it could be also interesting for language learners, okay? And then here, I would do the same thing. I click on game, and then I say like, okay, so for example, game and starter. Okay, conversation starter, games. This is great, so best conversation starter games. And by the way, Infernodus also shows me how many searches per month I made on the search term and if you have something that's not too high it's actually good because you're targeting a, a long tail keyword so this is great for me and again this is the insight that that people search for games that can be used as conversation starters but they don't find it at the top of search results so this is how you would approach that i will post the link to uh, an article that explains this process in more detail so you can go and follow the instructions step by step by the way, you can also import your own data into, Infra into Infranodus. So you can import, let's say, suggested search queries or search terms that people use when they search for your product as one graph. And then as another graph, you import the search results that they get. And then you overlay those two graphs using this feature here. 
and then you show the difference and then you analyze the difference make sure it's written here that you're on the difference tab if you want you can also switch and show each graph separately again so here i just see the supply and here i see the demand separately and the blue highlight are the specific words that are only present inside the demand so that's one last thing i want to show you is that when you click on the difference you can go to the blind spots you actually have all this information here and you can say okay show me only the words that that people use when they search for stuff but that they don't find anything on when they actually get to the search results so for example here i see that they're looking for pdf okay that's not so interesting for me but for instance i see something about text so funny questions to ask a guy over text so this is great because it could be something that i could also cater to one of the needs that people have and then another one is general knowledge here general knowledge questions okay this is not so much related to the topic of my book but uh, i could perhaps also target it somehow to also reach this audience as well so this is how it works feel free to try it out on infranodos.com and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. You can also contact us via the support portal. And remember to subscribe to this channel so you get informed when we put more videos like this out. And thank you very much for your attention.